just to make sure it works. Have you guys done many Facebook Lives? I don't know if I've done one. Oh, well, welcome to your first. <laughs> Perfect. And it says we are now live on Facebook. So we will just, we're a couple minutes ahead of the hour. So we're just going to let our audience trickle in for the next two minutes or so, and then we'll get started. I've been wearing this shirt for a lot of these, but I felt like it was especially appropriate today. It's a bit of a throwback. I think it's maybe two years old from your first win, Trevor. No, your first one was not 2018, but yeah, it, it was, was from, yeah, it was 2018. Yeah, yeah. that's right. The shirts at Scotiabank Toronto Marathon are pretty solid, like compared to some other races. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I like this flag. <clears throat> All right, one more minute and we will get started. I'm sure our audience will be thrilled with today's superstar guests and hopefully we'll have lots of questions and comments for you. All right, it is 3 p.m. Eastern time, and that means it is time to get started on our bi-weekly Runner's High. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Runner's High, presented by Canada Running Series. Runner's High is a collection of informal conversations with key and influential members of the world and business of running. My name is Kate Van Buskirk, and as always, I am so happy to be here acting as your host for today's discussion. Just a reminder that Runners High is interactive, and so you can feel free to drop your comments or your questions into the comments section on the CRS Facebook page, and we will leave some time at the end to get to those. I have a feeling that we might have a few more than normal this week because of our superstar guests. And just before we get to those guests and to our discussion, we are so excited to announce the Athletics Canada 42K Relay Challenge at the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon Virtual Race. This challenge is a joint collaboration between Athletics Canada and Canada Running Series, and it's aimed at providing a goal and some motivation, and of course, a fun way to keep us all connected during these crazy COVID times. Canada's top distance runners and Athletics Canada members alike are invited to take part in this four-person relay, which is going to be happening on the traditional Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon race weekend, which is of course, October 17th and 18th, so just about a month away. There are three categories that you can enter your team as, an all women's team, an all men's team, or a mixed gender team. Teams have to consist of four athletes, each running a single leg of the virtual race, all different distances if you wish, for a combined total of 42.2K. And what's really cool about this is because it's virtual, teammates don't have to be in the same place or even run at the same time or consecutively as long as all four members complete their leg over that weekend of October 17th and 18th, and the total distance is 42.2K, it counts. So you can learn more about this and register your team by clicking the event info tab at torontowaterfrontmarathon.com. And speaking of STWM, we are joined today by two of last year's standout performers at that event. Our guests this week are the winners of last year's Canadian Marathon Championships at the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon, Trevor Hoffbauer and Dana Pitoretsky. Welcome to you both. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So both Trevor and Dana ran huge personal bests at last year's race to not only earn the title of Canadian champions, but they also ran under their Olympic qualifying marks to solidify their spots on the Tokyo team. And of course, with the postponement of those Olympic Games, their dreams have been put on a temporary hold, but we're so excited to catch up with these two speedsters today and hear about how they've been adjusting to the postponement and handling the pandemic. 
So to start, I just want to take our audience back because, of course, there was so much excitement. It was a, a, an amazing weekend last year, but it has been a year. And of course, a lot has happened since then. So I'd like to just bring us all back to that weekend almost a year ago. Trevor, you ran a 209.51. And not only was that a whopping five minute personal best and over a minute and a half under the Olympic standard, it was also the second fastest time in Canadian history, of course, behind only Cam Levins, who had broken the 43 year old Canadian record. So can you take us back to that day almost a year ago and just give us a brief recap of what your goals were going in and then the race itself and the emotion you experienced as you came across that line as an Olympian? Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that it's been a year because like this year has gone by so quickly, even though March went by so slowly and I guess April as well, but that's beside the point. Um, yeah, like going into that race, my goal was obviously to hit Olympic standard and uh, that was the only thing that I was training for and that was the only thing that was on my mind. So I only had one goal and that was it. And my training was going really well beforehand. I felt like everything was clicking and I uh, couldn't have asked for a more perfect day. So getting up to the start line, I had cousins from uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I had family down or up from Sarnia and family from Calgary over there. So just having my family there gave me a little bit of extra mo motivation as well. And yeah, just I put all the pieces together and just got the job done. So that's a quick little recap. It was exciting. So I, that was a great quick little recap. I do have to ask you the million dollar question that I know you've been asked a lot, but can you contrast that with the finishing, uh, sort of the final home stretch from your first win at uh, the Canadian championships when you had sort of just really taken in all of the crowd around you, but perhaps given up a little bit of time in doing so. Can you contrast that with what it was like last year to come across that final stretch? Yeah, in 2018, 2018, I was definitely like, two years younger that's just a fact uh, I think uh, there is still a little bit of maturity to be earned uh, over those two years uh, compared to last year and uh, just being my first marathon I just had a lot of jitters and I was really excited and there's a big part of why I run that's external from the actual physical doing of I don't even know I'm just like jumbling words right now <laughs> I had to okay. work this morning, so <laughs> I'm a little... Still recovering. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a, a big part of why I run is not just the physical part of it. Uh, a lot of it is like spiritual and emotional. So uh, coming across the finish line in 2018, I felt like there was a lot of fulfillment in why I run uh, in that moment. And that's why I had such an expressive finish line uh, mm -hmm. kind of celebration. And compared to 2020, uh, yeah, I guess 2019, um yeah there was just one goal and that was to make the olympic games and i wasn't messing around so 2017 2017 was just excitement 2019 was a job got it done yeah and you could really see that like steely focus in the final stretch of the race last year and uh, i think that maturity really showed and it's amazing because again what a huge pb what a, what an amazing opportunity to uh, to solidify yourself on that olympic team that was so exciting so Dana, you had what I'm assuming was also the race of your life. I hope I can say that. You ran not only Olympic standard, running 229.03, which was a seven minute personal best. And although that sounds like a huge amount, and of course it is, right after the race, you also told reporters that you felt like you had had this race within you for years and that you were just so relieved that it was finally coming together on the right day. Can you take us back and tell us about your mindset going in and how things progressed throughout the race for you? Yeah, going in, um, of course, the Canadian women's field is so strong, or as like when you talk about who's trying to make the Olympic team. So our goal going into Toronto was to win. Um, that was first. And then hopefully winning meant that you ran Olympic standard, but at least that way, winning, you've got the spot and then you still have time to run Olympic standard if you need that. So that was, that was our goal going in. And, um, my training going into it wasn't the greatest, but everything seemed to come together right at the perfect time. And yeah, it's just one of those days where everything just felt like it fell into place and I felt really good. And, you know, even early on in the race, I just felt really confident that I'd be able to finish 
strong and finish ahead. Um, of course, you can't control how other people are feeling in the, the second half of the race, but I had a lot of confidence and I, I think you have to run with confidence if you're going to um, take a stab at winning. Um, so yeah, crossing the line, it was just, it was like a finally moment. Um, like finally, this is happening. Finally, I'm showing that I'm not um, like a 236 runner, which I kept saying, but it doesn't matter until you actually do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just great to win one for the team and for everybody who supported me for so many years when I just wasn't performing um, up to my standards. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something runners of all different uh, abilities and levels can relate to is sometimes you have to hit that plateau over and over again before you get the huge breakthrough. And it came together for both of you on this magical day, which was again, just thrilling to be a witness to. And of course, I'm sorry to have to bring us to where the next uh, place is that we're going here, but you both went from that incredibly, you know, wonderful high of being named to your first Olympic teams to that announcement only a few short months later that Team Canada was not going to be sending athletes to the Olympics in light of the unsafe conditions that COVID-19 had created. And Dana, you and I were chatting a bit yesterday and, and we were both saying that it feels like both a million years ago and yesterday at the same time. Um, can you reflect a bit on hearing about Team Canada's decision to withdraw and then about the eventual postponement announcement? Um, that was stressful. I felt like a lot of emotions at that time because of course, um, like lining up for your first Olympic race is a big deal and it, it means a lot. So to know that maybe the Olympics would be going on without your country there and without you there is like very heartbreaking. Um, once the decision was made that the Olympics would be postponed. Like that was definitely the right decision. And I felt for sure, like fine with that. Um, but the initial like emotion of, you know, it may be happening and you not being there was, was a challenge. Although thankfully those decisions or the, the time that elapsed between those decisions was quite short. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a, a long, time to be feeling very stressed and sad. <laughs> <laughs> so Trevor, similarly, you talked after your win la at last year's Canadian Champs about how making this Olympic team was going to be absolutely life-changing for you, that you had really put all your eggs into this one basket and you were going after this one final push. And then again, just months later, you learned that it's not going to happen the way that you thought it was. What was that like for you and how did those first couple of days or weeks feel? Yeah, for me, it was uh, like, obviously that race performance kind of opened the door to some financial incentive going into 2020. And uh, as athletes in Canada, like it's not the most lucrative of sports to be uh, competing in uh, from a financial standpoint. So I was running uh, low on funds going into the year and having secured that time just opened up doors and that kind of uh, dried everything up like the postponement of the Olympics and with COVID hitting that dried up a lot of opportunities that I was working on um, but then thankfully in May a lot of opportunities came back to the table and things have worked out so uh, that was definitely uplifting but in the moment in March it was kind of earth shattering because uh, yeah like everybody's employed and you're collecting CRB and like bills still have to be paid so uh, yeah, bit of a challenge, but overcame it. Well, that's great to hear. I know it was an emotional roller coaster for everyone. And it's great to hear that you were able to secure some, some more, uh, yeah, some financial assistance and some security there. But of course, one of the biggest aspects of all of this is that there was just so much uncertainty, not only about what was going to happen in the first month or two, but then if races were going to come back. So you're both runners. You're obviously, you've invested most of your lives into this endeavor as a profession. How have you both been handling the pandemic i'm curious about what training might have looked like what adjustments you might have made that that way but also maybe some different lifestyle changes that uh that might have come up as a result of the pandemic and dana maybe we'll start with you um 
besides there being no races, I felt like things weren't too different around the house. Like Josh has worked from home before the pandemic. So the working situation didn't really change for us. Um, it's definitely like, I felt like I was in a very fortunate situation where we know that we have a spot on the team. So we don't have the stress of needing a race mm -hmm. in order to qualify for the Olympics. So that I think allows us to like mentally cope um, with the unknown, whereas others might have to like keep feeling like they need to be sharp um, if a race presents itself. Um, but I guess for me, like without having any races coming up, I, I did a lot of base training. Um, I sort of like did what I wanted to do each day. Um, I love training. So it's, it's usually not challenging for me to motivate myself to do something. Um, but just giving myself the flexibility to like choose the type of workouts that I wanted to do, um, I think was like a big step in like staying motivated in this time where, um, most of the training is sort of on our own. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I live a pretty quiet life, so to be honest, not a ton has changed. <laughs> right. Well, and I've heard that from a lot of elite, especially distance runners who do tend to run a little more on their own. I mean, it's a pretty regimented, fairly, you know, quiet lifestyle, as you mentioned. So um, in mm -hmm. some ways, maybe this, this would have been not too dissimilar from that. And I do just want to throw in a mention here that for our audience's benefit, uh, you heard Dana refer there to the fact that she uh, and Trevor both had some security in their spot on the team. So Team Canada, Athletics Canada did announce that so long as they could prove fitness uh, leading into hopefully 2021's Tokyo's Olympics, um, they would be able to retain their spot on the Olympic team. So it is nice that you both have that security for sure. Although I know that there are a lot of other stressors at the same time. Um, so Trevor, maybe we'll, we'll throw the same question to you. You and I actually had a, an interview chat a couple months ago where you were talking about doing a lot of puzzles and playing a lot of games and how you were starting to run low on those. How else have you sort of uh, kept yourself sane, um, both from a lifestyle perspective and then a training perspective throughout the pandemic yeah from a lifestyle perspective uh, my part-time job we had to close down the store for uh, probably about two months there so then in the middle of may we opened up the store and i work at strides running store in calgary so once the store opened back up i was able to get in there three times a week so that brought some normality back to my life but it was pretty stressful just like monitoring people who had sanitized their hand coming into the store and limiting how many people you could actually have come in and then mask wearing it was kind of stressful and I had a few days where I had panic attacks just because of like close proximity of everything and stuff like that so it was definitely like a challenge and it was weird um but I guess that's just like the time that we're living in and also yeah over that two-month period like between March and May uh, my partner and I we just Played a lot of board games. We went for walks with tea and uh, just hung out. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too crazy. So, uh, yeah, and we do a lot of that practice still. She still does a little bit of telehealth at home. So she's at home uh, more regularly than she was before. And that's a nice change to have. And then on a training perspective, uh, I was training for World Half when... COVID hit and I guess I was like two or three weeks out from actually racing so I tried to push through the training block in April to do a time trial but I burnt myself out so I took a month off and then uh, just got back into it gradually in May and kind of like what Dana did I just did whatever I wanted I didn't have any structure to training and I just find just tried to find the love for the sport again and then I've been building up again for world half part two and that's coming up on October 17th. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. Awesome. And again, just to give our audience some context. So the World Half Marathon Championships were initially meant to be set at the end of March. Um, and Trevor, you had, uh, as you mentioned, already qualified for that and were training for it. And then it was, of course, postponed till um, October 17th. So just under a month away. And just as of yesterday, Trevor, you were officially named to Athletics Canada's team for those World Half Championships. So congratulations on that. That must feel great. 
not bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's just, uh, yeah. Well, and I think everyone has been right. Like, it's just amazing given that almost every other major event around the world has been canceled, that there's even going to be a world half marathon championships, but world athletics has assured us that as of now it is going on. So um, you kind of mentioned having to pivot with the training, but how has training gone over the last couple of weeks or months for that? And how are you feeling this close now to putting on a team Canada kit, even if it's not necessarily the one that you thought you were going to be racing in this year? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good right now, to be honest. Um, my body's really adapted to the training over the last little bit and kind of like the Toronto Marathon build. Um, in Calgary, it's a lot easier to train through the summer and peak for a fall race than it is to train through the winter and for a spring race. So this is the time of year when I'm at my best and I'm feeling really good right now. Did a time trial like 10 days ago up in Edmonton. Uh, it was a half marathon and ran 103. So um, feeling good. That was kind of like during peak mileage as well. So um, wow. workouts, workouts are an indication of fitness and it's all about what do you do on race day. So I'm looking forward to improving on that. No kidding. That's awesome. Congrats on that time trial. That must feel really good. And, and uh, to Dana's point about running with confidence, I'm sure that'll help you on that start line in Poland in just under a month's time. That's awesome. Thanks. So Dana, you decided not to attend the World Half Marathon Championships. And so I'm wondering for you, what's kept you motivated during this time when you really don't have any races on the calendar? Um, yeah, so <laughs> really right now it's... Um you know, sort of like what I touched on before, um, what's making me excited to train, what motivates me to go out the door and work hard. And it took me a pretty long time to figure out what that would be, um, especially knowing that I might not have a race to sort of show for. Um, so we sort of flip-flopped as to what to target and sort of decided on doing like a 5K training block and that's, that's motivating because the training is super different from what I'm used to. Normally I'm training for a half or a full marathon. Um, so it's sort of exciting to do something um, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. And at the same time, I know that that's not going to hurt the marathon. That's just gonna make marathon pace feel more comfortable. And I think sometimes doing marathon after marathon, you sort of lose that injection of speed in your legs. And speed is certainly my weakness. So mm -hmm. this will be like a working on the weakness uh, training block. And then hopefully I'll do a time trial or there might be um, a track race here in the winter that I can hop into, which is crazy because I don't go on the track. But <laughs> um, I'd like to break 16. That's sort of my goal is to just break 16 in the 5K. That's awesome. And again, it's kind of what you've both said about just doing things that get you excited and, and make you happy right now. And I think as much as COVID-19 has been so stressful for everyone and it's really put a damper on racing, it's I've heard this from so many runners, it's opened the door for people to be able to explore events that they would not have been able to do in, in other circumstances, right? And so getting after that 5K, that's great. It, it, like you said, it can't, it can't hurt. And we've seen lots of marathoners exploring those shorter distances. And um, one of my good training partners, Patty Birch, who's a marathoner, has been doing some 800 meter training with us, which was really fun. So you don't have to go that short, Dana, I promise. <laughs> but that's great. Good luck with that 5k time trial. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and of course, on that note of motivation, virtual racing has become a part of runners new normal for most of us. And the AC for, uh, 24k, sorry, the AC 42k relay challenge is a great new addition to that fall virtual race calendar. So I'm curious for both of you, Trevor, of course, you'll be in Poland when this is happening. So I have a feeling you won't be participating in the relay challenge. Um, but I'm gonna ask you both, who would be on your dream relay challenge team? And how do you think as marathoners, you would approach this relay? Because you're used to covering that whole distance by yourselves. Um, Dana, maybe we'll start with you. Do you have any idea of who would be on your dream team and how you might break it up? I did put some time into this. Well, so. we appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Hear me out, Trevor. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so first leg, I've got Evan Esselink. Nice. He's going to run 10K. Speedy guy. Yeah. Love him. Then, um, so I'm going to do mixed relay. I should say that. 
great. Then I'm going to recruit Emily Setlack to do a little 6.1K. Now, Trevor, it's actually perfect because you're doing 21.1 and it just so happens that you're actually going to be doing that on the Saturday. So we've got our team, you just upload her. It's so perfect, okay? And then I'll finish it off with a 5K, um, which I'm going to need to try to not be the weakest link here. So I better get to getting. <laughs> but you're training for that anyway. Oh, somewhere Alan Brooks is licking his chops, imagining this coming together. You guys, you gotta do this. That sounds incredible. Trevor. <laughs> I'm in. You don't even need to add anything. You're already <laughs> just gotta, doing it. <laughs> just upload the GPS and you're set. Oh, that is brilliant, Dana. All right. The challenge has been extended. Trevor, how are we feeling about that? Honestly, I'm in for that. Uh, I haven't put like too much thought into it, but I was talking with Alan Brooks a little bit on the side and I still need to reply to his email. He mentioned that, yeah, I'm going to be running on that same day. So if you want to put that team together, I'm in. I'll send you the GPS okay. link. Even I'll though I don't, really, like, I don't really wear a watch on race you day. You just wear it on your ankle. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll wear a watch. Okay. You don't have to look at it. You can tape over it. Um, but you, okay, you just have to convince Evan, um, your best bud, and I'll recruit M, and then we've got a solid team. All right, guys, you heard it here first. And hopefully Evan and Emily are, are tuning in right now and yeah. are getting a virtual thumbs up from them that they're in. This sounds like a power team. Um, I must say, I, ha I had a little Achilles procedure done recently, but if everything goes well with my recovery, I'm planning on being on a mixed relay team as well. And uh, so I think we've got some challenge going on here, guys. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe the question is you focus uh, towards you, Kate, like who would you have on your team? Oh no, hypothetically, let me think. It might happen to be Matt Hughes, Patty Birch, and Maddie Davidson and myself. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. tough. Yeah, but I mean, it, that, but it's great and it would be broken down fairly similar. Uh, I think I might yeah. be spilling the tea here. I'm not sure if my team knows that I'm broadcasting this live on Facebook, but here it is. Um, Patty Birch would be uh, doing 20K. Uh, Matt Hughes would do 10 and then Maddie and I would each do 6.1. So that could be really fun too. So oh, great. gosh. And I like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this is great. And for any audience members, again, who are listening right now, uh, tuning in, you can register your own relay team by visiting torontowaterfrontmarathon.com. And again, the legs can be of any distance you want, as long as they are at least 5k and the total is 42.2k. So hopefully we'll get lots and lots of teams registered for this, both in the elite and rec runner community alike. It is a great opportunity. So you guys, we've really appreciated this chat. I've, I've got to ask, you know, understanding and with our upcoming relay challenge aside, understanding that we're all living with these, uh, you know, really uncertain times. What are some of your hopes and goals leading into 2021 and provided things start to open up again a little bit, uh, what do you think might be on the racing calendar moving forward? Whew. I can answer, or I can take whoever's ready to answer that first. <laughs> it's so Trevor? Hard. It's so hard to say like what the spring is gonna look like and even to like with just even potential race options, um, I was thinking a little bit over those last few days because there have been like some opportunities that have come up underground about races and like just the way that it is right now, I just don't feel comfortable traveling to the United States of America. Um, and there's probably going to be some opportunities there. So yeah, it's really like, I can't even put thought into like which races would be a possibility or what could actually go on. I think it's pretty dependent on like us getting more data on the situate or getting more data on the virus itself, um, how we can handle it a little bit better. And if there's any ways to properly treat it in the new year. Right. But yeah, maybe something over in Europe or uh, maybe we can get creative here in Canada and organize something on a small scale in like Vancouver or Toronto. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's yeah. so hard to say. It is really hard to say, of course. And again, there's no certainty of anything, but, and I know it's a long ways away, but heading into that start line, 
um, in July of 2021, what, what do you think the goals might be? I and mean, they could even be broad, but uh, yeah. what, would, what would you love to be able to come away from those Olympics with? What kind of outcome would you love to come away from those Olympics with? Uh, Not ready to talk about it? <laughs> I have numbers on my head. Okay. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I won't share that until after the race. <laughs> sure. Yet to be discussed. All right. And how about you, Dana? How, how do you think things might look uh, heading into 2021 and what are some of the big goals? Um, I know Josh, have, Josh and I have talked about, you know, sort of hoping to have like a spring marathon. It seems so strange to not run a marathon before the Olympics, um, but that's going to be really challenging to do because like Trevor was mentioning, I really don't want to travel to the U.S. For, for anything in the foreseeable future. And that's probably where most of those opportunities are going to be. Um, it'd be great if around the Bay was an option because that could be like a good spring goal, getting in like a pretty long effort and just even peaking for that for once could be fun but again that's like a a large race so whether that happens is unknown um but yeah I guess the Olympics is one of those things that it's really hard to predict time or placing because that really you can't control how other people perform and um you know, if everybody else has a really good day and you still have a really good day, um, like thinking about like your place or your your time and like heat conditions is very different. So I think it's just wanting to feel really proud of the race that I put out um, to be healthy and fit on the start line and confident and hopefully use Tokyo as like a building block for hopefully other international races in the future. But I think just being able to like walk away, being proud of my performance and like knowing that I gave my best, I think that's all any of us can ask for in like a huge race like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome answer. That's great. Well, on the theme of the Olympics, I'm getting some questions coming in from our audience. So this is kind of fun. I'm going to put this to both of you. The first question is, if you could go to the Olympics for any sport other than running, what would it be? Basketball basketball did you play basketball growing up Trevor yeah, yeah. actually basketball or golf both would be pretty cool very but different but yeah neat good sports did you ever have Olympic aspirations in either of those events I always wanted to play in the NBA but I just didn't have the discipline or drive to actually work at the sport um I find that hard to believe <laughs> given that you're a 209 <laughs> marathoner <laughs> I, was a, I was a different person in high school so uh, gotcha yeah and that's those are the years when you need to be working pretty hard at that sport right cool and Dana how about you any sport other than running that you could compete at the Olympics um I think triathlon I just think that kind of training would be really fun because you're sort of always mixing it up and it just seems like a fun sport to train for and you've been doing very some, hard right <laughs> and you've been doing some bike training through COVID is that right yeah, I had a little injury in March and um, just hopped on the bike like I usually do on the trainer. And I just kept that up even when I was back running to just supplement and keep the training load pretty high, but without doing like 100 mile weeks every week. And I, I don't know, I feel good. I feel strong when I keep cycling. I think it keeps things activated and the window of riding outside is closing. So I'm sort of trying to enjoy it. Um, well, it's not horrendous, although today would not be the day for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned it's a hundred percent downpour there in Vancouver. So. It is a downpour. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So we got basketball, golf, and triathlon. That's great. A really, really diverse uh, mix of sports. All right. Second question, aside from running, which Canadian athletes are you most excited to meet in Tokyo? So any other Canadian athletes that you're kind of heroes or just interesting folks that you might want to get to know at the Olympics? Understanding that we don't know all of who is going to comprise Team Canada, but, and if you can't think of any for this Olympics, we could even broaden it to any other Canadian athletes that you wish you could meet who had been at the Olympics. 
Honestly, I don't really Gosh. care about meeting any new athletes. <laughs> I just care about sharing the moment with Evan Eschelink and Tristan Woodfine. That's beautiful. It's a bit of a cop-out answer, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, how about yourself? Any other Canadian athletes, either from our sport or others, that you might be really excited to, uh, to meet in Tokyo? Mm, I think maybe from like the past. I feel like I've been seeing this video going around Twitter a lot, but Simon Whitfield just like crushing it in the triathlon. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe getting some tips from him. Well, he would be the right one to get tips from. And I think it was uh, September 17th was the 20 year anniversary of him winning that surprise gold medal at the first, uh, first triathlon ever contested at the Olympics. And you're right, that video is incredible. So yeah, good, good answers, guys. I like that. All right, one more question. Are there any up and coming Canadian marathoners that you could see making next year's or the 2024 games? I mean, you both, I, I know that the performances were coming for so long for you both, but they were both really big breakthroughs, right? Like, are there any other Canadian marathoners that you're really excited about seeing have big breakthroughs between now and, and Tokyo or 2024? Yeah, on, on the, like on both sides, we're really strong and really deep as it is right now. Like you, you can, pick we don't really have room for anybody else to come out <laughs> now just kidding <laughs> it's always room um I think like Evan and Tristan are definitely both have so much more to show um like on the women's side I think a lot of women have like shown a lot of province uh, promise um like Emily Setlack I think she she has a big one in her. It's just, when will there be races? Right. Um, and even as like far as, Victoria yeah. Victoria Coates, like potentially mm. in the future. Mm -hmm. You do well at that distance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the great thing, I mean, I know you were joking there, Dana, but the great thing about saying there's not any more room is it really wasn't that long ago when um, we had a couple superstars at the top routinely, but there wasn't a lot of depth in Canadian marathoning. And to see how far we've come, I would say, over the last decade is so exciting. And uh, we know that success builds on success. So I think what you both have done and what those before you have done to create this depth in Canada now in the distance road running is is thrilling and we're going to see that perpetuate it, it's I, I think it's without question that as soon as we get races back we're going to see a lot of young athletes come up and follow in both of your footsteps and those who came before you so that's a lot of good stuff to look forward to when the world opens up again <laughs> So I want to just wrap up with a final question here. And that is, um, you know, of course, a lot of our audience are roadrunners of all different ages, abilities, uh, goal levels. But I'm wondering if you could each leave our audience with one or two pieces of advice about how to manage these unprecedented times, whether that be through motivation or staying healthy, or as you guys both uh, alluded to, setting alternative goals. Any last words of advice for our audience before we say goodbye? Um, I think I think it's uh, sort of what we've we've both touched on is just finding what motivates you and going after that and it might be like a, a different distance than you're used to training for but just I guess whatever gets you out the door right now is is sort of like the direction maybe that you should take and then as well it's a great time to make sure that you're keeping everything healthy. Um, I think sometimes when we have races looming in the distance, it's really easy to push through those pains that maybe we shouldn't be pushing through. And right now I think it's an, an easier time to maybe take like that extra day off that we need or um, I don't know, push like a workout if we don't think that our, we can handle it. Um, I think it, it should be easier to stay healthy at this time because mm -hmm. we don't have those like scary things coming up on the calendar. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are great pieces of advice. Trevor, how about you? Any last words for our audience? Yeah, I would, I would echo that. And to add on, maybe try, 
um, try a different activity. Like I know with Dana, you're biking quite a bit and mm -hmm. uh, biking is a great alternative to running and reduces impact, but still gets that uh, cardiovascular exercise going. Um, another great activity with winter coming up is alpine and Nordic skiing or cross country skiing. And I know in Alberta specifically, the government's trying to close down some of our, uh, close down some of our provincial parks and campgrounds that they're taking away funding from some of our cross country ski trails. So, uh, if we can kind of put a little bit of money into that and if more people can participate in that sport, then maybe we can get more funding into our parks and kind of reverse that. Um, but yeah, cross country skiing is fantastic as well. It's a great alternative to running and especially when the snow starts flying and hamstrings start tending up in the cold weather, <laughs> cross country skiing is pretty good. Absolutely. Great advice from you both. Well, thank you both so much, Trevor and Dana, for taking the time to speak with us today on Runners High. It was a pleasure connecting with you both again, and I'm sure for our audience being able to hear from our incredible Canadian victors from, uh, from last year's uh, Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon. Trevor, we wish you the very best of luck at the World Half Marathon Championships in Poland next month. Thanks. And Dana, best of luck to you and your training and all your goals moving forward. And for both of you with your upcoming virtual relay challenge, so exciting. I'll see you guys virtually out there. But thank you both again for taking the time today. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. So just as a reminder to our audience, you can register your team for the Athletics Canada 42K virtual relay challenge or any of the other STWM virtual races taking place throughout October by visiting torontowaterfrontmarathon.com. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's Canada Running Series, Runners High. Stay safe, stay healthy, run strong. We'll see you again soon.